From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me as always, Ryan Eldridge. Hi, guys. Maggie Morrill. Hi. We're here to talk about all things Maine, all things cabins, and all things Maine cabin related. And I don't think it gets more Maine than our guests today. It doesn't. This. Yeah, we've got John and Jake Martin, the father and son duo from the well-known Maine business that anybody who's from Maine knows the jingle. Should have bought it. When I saw it. At Martin's. Maggie could have joined that us. Was rough. Yeah. Oh, rough. But yeah, they'll be joining us today, so we're looking forward to chatting with them. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, Facebook, Instagram, our YouTube channel. Check out our online store for great merchandise at shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always have to thank our sponsors for making this possible. Nelma, Nelma.org, EasternWhitePine.org, SprucePineFur.org. HeroMediaArts.com and Hammond Lumber Company, the official building materials supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company. So this is like interviewing your idols. Like this is big. Yeah. The today's guest. Yeah. No. Fle- so Fletcher has this thing where whenever we're driving, he just asks, "What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Who's your favorite?" Just random stuff. And he's like, "What's your favorite store?" And I'm like, "Martin's." And it's like you know, it's one of those stores that you just always have to stop at because <laughs> you ne- like. You never know what you're going to get, and it's always different. Yeah, and that, you know, they're, they're all across Maine, and it's a salvage store. They buy out, you know, store, box stores, retail stores from around the country, and you really never know what you're going to get. And, and it, But it's not like those junky salvage stores, like the dollar stores. I mean, it's good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have a lot of furniture in our house from Martin's, and a lot of clothes. and Yeah, I bet, all, I, yeah a lot of clothes, I bet. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> what's, Asked, what's the best? score you've ever gotten at martin's oh well the windows in the last couple of camps were phenomenal gosh it's hard to say i've gotten so much great stuff over the years ash and i got a beautiful piece i don't know what that's called it's by the table you made us it's it's this and i'm all, i don't know but oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and like, it had yep it's a beautiful piece of furniture and it brought normally like 1500 bucks we got it for like 600 bucks because one of the corners had a little ding in it and i just i mean i fixed it yeah with some putty and it, it was a beautiful yeah i mean i I, I like the random stuff. Like, I have a roll of probably a three foot wide roll of like that aluminum foil tape. Oh, and it's three foot. Three foot wide stuff. And they had one roll of it, and I, you know, had to buy it. I love their rugs, too. They got a, yeah. really nice rugs. And when you have d- puppies, like, or dog, like, yeah. you know, you can buy a nice $100 rug if it gets bad after a while, grab another one. But they have really good selection. Yeah, and it is. It's almost like playing the lottery. Like, you go in. You don't know, if, you know, you might find one thing, you might find, you know. And then you can go to some really cool random snack you haven't had in a long time. Yeah, but then other times you go in there and you just want everything. It's fun. Maggie, what's your favorite? I don't have one. Oh, come on. I don't. Do you prefer Lewiston or Martin, or Waterville? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Mm, <laughs> I've probably been to the one in Lewiston more. Obviously. Which one do you like better? I think I like the one in Lewiston best. I gotta give a shout out to Tina. She's the one. <laughs> she works in the hard. The manager down in hardware. She helped me with the windows. Yeah, that was a good score. Yeah, for and again, that's one way we help keep budgets low is by shopping at stores like Martin's that have great products at a discounted price. I'd have to say hardware, definitely Lewiston because they have that whole basement. Yep. Yeah. Furniture, what? It's a tie. Yeah. All sorts. They're of all stuff. awesome. But I mean, it is. It is officially summer. <laughs> Just like that. We're, we're complaining about the heat now. <laughs> Today was the first day I went out without long underwear on. It That's, took you that long? Yep. I, you know, I just never, you, well, never, you never know. And But today it's like, nope. Yeah, it's you, nice. You do know. There's nah. like, You can look at the weather. I took my long under, like my bottoms off. I go tops for a lot longer, but a couple weeks ago I took my bottoms off. And it was like 45 yeah. in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the job site was like 10, maybe with a wind chill. Right. Like, I mean... It's a lot different when you're around water. She's giving us that eye again. That's fine. She'll learn someday. But yeah. No, I won't. <laughs> Spring is here. 
Spring is here. Plants are, I mean, flowers are shooting out of the ground. Um, Film yeah. crew's gone. Film crew's gone. That's a long three it weeks. It was a long three weeks. We had three great reveals. We started another good round of camps. Now it's exciting just to get back to work. And It's been a while since we had a run like that with the film crew. You know, because of Corona and everything. and Yeah. But, I mean, that was what we call, you know, the a C shoot, which is camp's ending where we do the final touch day and the reveals and run around like crazy. And then an A shoot where we're starting camps and doing the arrival. So it's an A and C, which is about the longest we went was, what, a month maybe with them? Yeah, I think a month close to five weeks. It would, so. And it's not on them. It's just a lot because we're running around like your days are long. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. It's, and it's not like hard. It's not always like hard work like but, but it's just, it's just going constant. to get random stuff like oh we need these super special latches for this and then you need it's like just when you get yeah. random stuff you can run like crazy yeah it's the final de- the finishing details the small details i always know it's close to the end because my truck right now is <laughs> you know everything just gets shoved in it i had life jackets three pairs of boots endless shirts tools supplies trash Three foot roll of aluminum tape. <laughs> <laughs> it all ends up in the truck. But no, that's good. We're uh, forward progress. I'm ready. A lot of stuff going on. In the woodshed. We're getting ready for phase two. Kind of improving what's there, so it's not a mud pit. Ready for the summer. Yeah, bring it on. Knock on wood. And today we got another cool video by Hero Media Arts. Uh, it's Tony Machardi and Sons. They're located in Hallwell, Maine, and they do uh, gravestones and a lot of cool granite work. I'm pretty sure you've all seen it down there, but check out this video and learn a little bit more. When I was a kid, we'd go with Dad, and we'd take a picnic. And he'd work for a while, and then we'd break and have lunch in a cemetery. So this is our 101st year, started in 1918. Because this building was built in the early 20s. After the flood of 87, I started rebuilding it because it was sagging quite, quite a bit. But if my grandfather walked in here, he'd recognize it. It, it uh, strikes me every time I step into that doorway right there that I'm looking out at the same river, at the same weather, at the same thing that my grandfather saw. I have a number of friends who tell me they're going to be cremated and that they don't need a marker, and I just tell them, uh, ask them if they have any kids. If they say yes, I said, well, your kids will do it, or your grandchildren. People buy these because they need to have closure. Until they see it in granite, in the cemetery, it doesn't really sink in. It sometimes, sometimes it's difficult, um, especially when you're doing kids. That's tough. But, you, but it makes them feel better, so you do it. I'm 76 years, I'll be 77 actually in a couple of days. Um, my wife thinks we should slow down, but I like this business, and what would I do when I retire? Now we have one of our favorite segments, Meet the Camp Owners. Today we are joined with Renee and Paul from Camp KV Camp. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys. Hey guys. What's up, thanks, guys? thanks for having us. So uh, you were able to watch the episode down at the Quarry Tap Room. I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you. Um, how? What do you think of the episode? Uh, we thought it was it was awesome. Uh, I never know what to expect because we do a lot of filming, and so we never know what's going to go in. So it's always fun and exciting. Yeah, no, it, it was fun. It was it was fun seeing the camp and, and the Y represented on on national TV, and obviously you guys brought the beauty, and, and we just brought the <laughs> we brought the place, we brought the location. So are you got? Have you been down there yet this season? Now that the snow is gone. 
we actually went out when it was snowing in the snow. Oh, we nice. braved the elements and went out uh, with some kids and had some fun down there. And then we also were out there um, last week uh, checking everything out, getting things ready for the summer. Yeah, it looks great in there. All I'll say is that there's one really, really happy mouse that <laughs> found a pile of uh, embroidery floss that made probably the prettiest mouse nest on earth. Oh, I bet it was what? A, uh, the embroidery floss. I bet oh. it was a beautiful nest. <laughs> right? <laughs> It feels like that camp was so long ago because I was watching the episode and it was it was snowing a couple of days. Remember we put the roof on? I mean, yes, it, it wasn't that long ago, but it was really neat to see because it brought us through fall and there was some great videos seeing the seasons changing. Our trolley ride was pretty awesome. That's right, the trolley ride from the Y right yeah, out there. Our arts and crafts. Yeah. So you guys are getting ready for your summer program. Was that will that be the start of everything? Is the summer program, or do you have anything going on before that? Uh, our summer program starts um, in the middle of June, and so that's the first big thing that we have going on out there. Uh, we do have a camp open house on uh, June 5th, and um, so we're, we're starting to get out there now, opening up camp and um, cleaning everything up. Uh, we do have some things that we need to fix up from the vandalism that happened this fall, so we're trying to get all of that stuff taken care of before we have kids out there. Yeah, you guys haven't really even got to show it off yet because we got it late in the season. Camp was closed, so that's exciting. Yeah, have a new round of camper sport. Fletcher, my son, is actually, I think, set up to join the camp for at least two weeks this summer. So he's super excited about that. He knows how to run a hammer. Put him to work. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. We'll have plenty of work to do. Nice. So I was watching the episode, and you know, they, like you said, Renee, they filmed so much. And not everything makes it. And it's kind of neat. It's almost like Christmas to watch the way the episode goes. But we had spent some time on the obstacle course, or the ropes course. And that was pretty funny, but I'm actually glad it did not make it. <laughs> and I did um, some poetry for my wife, too. I think with Chase there. So I'm glad that didn't make it. So I had a good episode. <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys are also in the process of fundraising for... The main lodge is how's that? How's work on that going? Yeah, so the uh, the Camp KV Board of Trustees, who actually own the camp, um, they are fundraising to not tear down the lodge, but to renovate it so that it is um, no longer a home for little critters, and um, it's airtight. It will be able to have a um, like a kitchen and anything to rent it out. Um, so that's that's going pretty well. Um, it looks like that's probably a you know three year process, um, but we're well on our way for sure. Nice, nice. And kind of piggybacking on that idea, what's really cool about getting the arts and crafts cabin now is that we had space uh, allocated in the new lodge for the arts and crafts program, which now obviously thanks to you guys has a new home at camp. So that kind of leaves us with a unique problem of having space in our new lodge without wow, a that never happens <laughs> i'm gonna vote for 24 hour roller rink <laughs> nice or one huge cotton candy maker <laughs> i think the campers would love either of those <laughs> yeah. nice um so renee you've actually been through this whole process with us before when we did the small small play cabin for the y um was the experience similar different was there anything you you know because first time it's always a whirlwind and there's a lot going on were you a little more prepared and ready not as nervous not as nervous or more nervous um i think i was not as nervous um and i definitely used some of the very constructive criticism from my my family my children <laughs> that, <laughs> and so i i made some adjustments um maybe not have such a high voice when I saw the cabin and was excited or maybe not jump around so much. So I tried to um, make those adjustments and maybe be a little more cool uh, in their eyes. So I hope that came through. I think the world, oh, I think the world's a poorer place. Uh, we need more Renee to um, Absolutely, absolutely. Have you gotten your report back on the second try from the family yet? 
Uh, well, they watched it with us at the quarry, and um, everybody said it went well, Good. and nobody was making fun of me in any moment, so I guess everything went well. Success. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for joining us. We always love to just kind of check in with the camp owners, and or in this case, the cabin trustees and directors, and just see how you, what you thought of the episode of the project. And we had plans. We still need to install a few lights there. Yeah. Jason and I, were our electrician, we're all set to go tomorrow, but uh, believe it or not, we have a snow day for tomorrow, so. Go figure. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know where it to find us. Like, it seems like every time we do something with you guys, there's excessive amounts of snow. <laughs> there was snow on our playground. There was snow out at Camp KV. There's snow tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're bad luck when it comes to weather, but it makes for great TV. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome to Maine. Well, thank you very much. We won't keep you up anymore, but yeah, thanks. And we'll uh, see you this summer and we'll see Fletcher at your camp. Keep your eyes out for him. Have a good day, guys. Well, thanks, fellas. And we are back with our guests today, John Martin and Jake Martin. How are you guys doing today? Great. Doing you? Great. Doing very well, thank you. What a beautiful day, huh? Absolutely. Yes. Well, it's perfect. It like spring. Perfect for us because our um, guest segment is brought to you, us, us by Baxter Bruin. So today, Chase and I are probably going to tease you and have a Baxter Coastal Haze in your honor. Uh, <laughs> when the world's back to normal, we'll be able to have beers with our guests in person, hopefully someday. But... This one's for you. Thanks for your time today, to guys. That. Thank you. We'd love to do that. That looks tasty. Baxter's, that looks great. Baxter's another great main company, and, you know? And, and at our workplace, we tell people they can't drink on the job site, so yeah, got water. <laughs> water for us. <laughs> I, I got one of those going, too. <laughs> so in the background, you have your father's picture hanging there. We do. Mickey Martins, and he is the one who started this all. Yep, started it back in 1964. I think, I think Chase and I would we'll take, oh, yes. still take a drink to Mickey right Cheers now because <laughs> he has made us place that the Morrow family loves. Like, <laughs> Ashley and Chase go there more than – and I'm, uh, most people I know go at least once a month. You guys go all the time. You got him. You got to go regularly. I mean, I go in with Ashley and Lewiston and Water, they, all the girls know her. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, it's pretty awesome. Well, you know, and that's our that's our bread and butter customer. You know, we buy and sell deals to our customers. You know, we don't have regular supply of goods. Everything is kind of a one and done deal. So if you don't come in and regularly shop, you're you're going to miss out. Absolutely. So. so when when did the first Martins open? He actually started the probably in, like I said, just about 1964. You got to understand it was a long process for him to get going. He was doing. Uh, carrying a U.S. mail roll carrier out in Albion. Yep. He actually ended up going to auctioneer school. Because really? he, he, the mail route got done about 1, 1 30 in the afternoon. He figured that was half a day's work. <laughs> yeah, not, nothing new so, after two. <laughs> so he, he was running around doing auctions for people going out of business. And it kind of morphed into he had an auction house in uh, Fairfield. Yep. Right, right beside the railroad tracks. It was... Um, and people would start coming in between auctions, want to know, you know, Mickey, have you got a stove or I got, a, have you got a refrigerator? Mine just died. I need it right now. And if he had one, he'd sell it. And after enough of that, people kind of said, well, you really need a retail seller's license to be doing that. And it morphed from auctions into, you know, we started that store and because in 64, my son wasn't around and I was a wee tad of, uh, you know, eight or nine, 10 years old. Gotcha. Now that first store was going. It was the old one in Waterville, going towards Fairfield on the river there. Whatever the route that was, heading out of downtown. Is that correct? Uh, you must be speaking about College Avenue. Yeah, is that what it is? That that was that's where we moved when we left Fairfield. Okay. Oh, maybe maybe I'm thinking Fairfield then. If you were going north northbound Waterville to Fairfield, went past uh, Hudamaki. Yeah. Okay. I have to stop and think because I'm old enough. I still call it Kite's Fiber. <laughs> and if you go underneath the underneath the railroad overpass yep. or underpass, the next building on your left was where we were. That's what I was trying to describe. And it. so that's where yeah. the shoe 
shoes were for a long shoes time too, right? Shoes were there for years, yep. but before it was shoes, it was the original. We had we had an basically it was an auction hall, auction yeah. building, and Dad put in four self serve coin operated car washes because he figured. If somebody will pay him to do that, he didn't have to have an employee there. It was a pretty good deal. <laughs> so now for our viewers out of state that don't know what Martin's is, you guys are a chain of stores. How many in, in Maine? Well, for the Boston viewers, just tell them. <laughs> the world viewers. <laughs> well, you know, you might have some people from Boston right. area watching. Um, we were yeah, the people down there would know we were similar to Building 19. That's what oh, it was. Okay. I kept yeah. wanting to call it Pier 19, but Building, building 19. 19. Yeah. Building 19. Yeah. And yeah. We've, we've got 14 stores wow. only in Maine. Yeah. And they, you know, they range anywhere from, you know, 25, 30,000 square foot store that we have in some of our smaller rural communities, right up to we bought uh, three old Walmarts that are over 100,000 square feet uh, that we're in. And for the viewers who don't know quite who we are and what we do, um, we're a discount off-price retailer. Um, we sell everything from furniture and clothing to general merchandise, food, snacks. Basically, we've always said we'll buy and sell anything we don't have to feed. And, we, <laughs> and, and well, that was that was that was Dad's line because yeah. he had five kids. Yeah, Mickey's <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, and we you know we've had oddball deals, but basically, if if we can find a deal on something. And we think we can translate it to an exciting deal in our stores for our customers to be excited about. We'll buy. And oftentimes we're buying more than most people would think we could for 14 stores. Um, I know we were talking before we started recording about the, the size of our current warehouse. And it's it's full of some large, large deals that we're able to buy at a discount because we're buying such a large amount. But it may not fit in 14 stores all at once. And I want our listeners to know it's it's good stuff. This isn't like those junk stores. I mean, you guys get nice, nice stuff and whole array of stuff. I mean, season one, we're down in, um, where were we down past Bar Harbor? And we went in and you guys had these bins of these slippers. <laughs> That's right. And they were like a buck and they were so comfortable, but they, they were like a little more than a slipper. They're more of a casual shoe. <laughs> well, how many pairs did we buy? I, I think I bought like 30 pairs. Yeah, I was going to say at least 20. Everyone, cast and crew had them and we still have some today. <laughs> You know, and at that same time, you guys had bought out a surf store somewhere, so we all had a new surf. <laughs> yeah, new uh, shorts for the summer. And even this last round of camps, the windows that we got were amazing. I mean, it really made the camps. Yeah. Where'd you get those, Chase? In the Lewiston Martins. And same thing, you know, I think it just... It just happens, yeah. It just happens. You, you know, you never know what yeah. you're going to get. You just go in with an open mind, and we were looking... We, did, we weren't looking for windows, but... Windows were on the list of something we're going to need for the camps, and saw them, bought them, and it worked That's out great. great. And again, it's you know I think it's that main frugality in any way to save money and stretch the dollar. You know that's that's how we definitely uh, make the budgets work on a lot of these camps. I, you know, but, I, yeah, I mean a lot a lot of off price retailers throughout the country. You know they work more in kind of the the import market. You right. know sourcing overseas to see where they can save money to pass to their customers. We're a little bit different in that. We work with a lot of insurance companies. You know, if, if there is a nationwide retailer that maybe has a location that has a small insurance loss, you know, a roof leaked or a, you know, a small fire on a pallet in their back room, you know, their insurance company will consider that as an insurance loss, no different than if one of us had a, a vehicle accident. Um, and we have been, you know, networking this business of 40, 50 plus years that we've got relationships with these national retailers and insurance companies throughout the country so we can buy an entire retail store at a discount, basically as an insurance loss. Mm -hmm. and, and as you guys are saying, you know, be it a, a surf shop or, you know, a nationwide well-known big box retailer, it's items that are not regularly discounted. Right. You know, we can put a name, a name brand recognizable item on the shelf at, you know, 40, 50, 60% off retail. And it's, and it's a one and done deal, but it, it does make us different. Right. What, one of the best feelings is coming out of like you won the lottery. Like you go to my, <laughs> if you go to mine's a lot, you feel like yeah. you won the lottery. You know, don't you like? Well, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, you were talking about Chase looking at furniture. So some of that furniture, we're, we're buying closeout fabrics. So, you know, like if this color is the fabric, oh. the shirt, but the, some designer decides that's not going to be the hot fabric next year. They, they sell it off and don't want to make any more sofas out of it. So we might buy it from a, we, we've got a sleep sofa factory that we've, she picks fabrics for us, close out deals. And I've told her, I don't care if it makes one sofa or 
50 sofas. Uh, if it's a deal, we'll buy it. So sometimes you'll see one and somebody says, I want two. It's like, nope, can't do it. There's none left. Uh, I, I know firsthand about your fabric department because I don't know if you know, but your fabric department in Lewiston is top notch. And my yep. wife drags me down there. And her new thing is she's making pillows, and she has <laughs> bought bags. I'm gonna have to buy a Conex trailer now because she bought in so much cool fabrics from you guys. Made all these really funky pillows. Like, it's just amazing what you can get. Yeah, absolutely, it really is. Um, so, do you you guys deal with directly with insurance companies, or is it more with the individual it, like it, company? There's like, an in, there's a there's a business in the middle. Yep. Called Salvors. And they represent basically they, they liquidate the stuff for the insurance company. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So we don't deal directly with the insurance companies. Yep. Um, you know, and the Salvo's job is to go in and verify there really is a loss, um, either verify or do the inventory, and then when they've got they know what they got, they try to sell it to somebody like us. Yep. Yeah. And I imagine with fifty years, you get great relations with the people. You know, you get your reputation, so they. You know, when they know that you have someone's going to come in there, you have the the ways and the means to buy the stuff. It definitely helps out. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Dad, that's why he's here. He's always watching over us. Um, he he always said, "Your word has to be your bond. Yeah. If you say you'll take it, you take it. And you say you're going to do something, you do it." Sure. Now, do that's you... how we do business, and a lot of the relationships understand that. So nice. Now, do you guys like once you get you bring, everything comes into your Winslow warehouse, gets sorted. Uh, not necessarily. No. The most part. Actually, we, we've got a for, um, a clothing and footwear warehouse actually about a quarter mile down the road near the canals near Baxter Brewing, right in Lewis. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and Convenient. So we, a lot of our furniture, uh, I'm sorry, footwear and clothing go through there. But and, yeah, fabric. and fabric. And yeah. fabric. The majority of everything else comes through our Winslow warehouse. So it's more things come in to certain categories, go to certain warehouses, and then it gets divided up among the stores. Um, yep, pretty do, much. Do you ever find yep. that certain things sell better in certain stores and have to shift around? And yes. Absolutely. You know, we, you, we might get some high-end designer clothing that you know is going to do very well in our, our scarborough location mm -hmm. or we may have a ski or snowmobile stock that heads up to madawaska or callis or rumford so yeah it's i mean we don't have to tell you guys you know maine is an unbelievably beautiful and diverse, diverse state. Yeah. you know it's you, it is so much variety around the state and yeah we have to massage those deals basically where we think they'll do the best do the best and it's not all sending the best stuff to one store right you know, right you right try and spread it around so all the stores no matter which martins you visit you'll find a great deal yeah because i mean you you want good stuff at every store but you also need to know what's going to sell where it's a right exactly. interesting side of that business that we need some insider information <laughs> though like what like what days do the new windows get there <laughs> right, like, right right so what's the secret code yeah yeah well <laughs> how do we get on the hudamaki factory <laughs> Now, you guys, I mean, you're, you're born and raised in Maine. You love the outdoors. On our notes, it says one of you is a volunteer pilot for Angel Flight. Yep. I, I'm a volunteer pilot. Haven't done a lot of the flights lately due to COVID. Sure. And four years ago, my wife had a pretty nasty fracture of her lower leg. So it's kind of changed our lives a, a little bit. But yes, uh, both Angel Flights and an organization called PALS. PALS is... Uh, patient airlift services and it's p pilots volunteer to for flights and pick people up and take them to or from sometimes both basically it's generally for medical treatment yeah yep. you know so picture yourself if you're in uh, caribou and you need to be in boston for a uh, an hour to two hour medical treatment Ten you hour really ride. don't want you don't feel like driving no. right so Pilots, some of them or us, have volunteered to do that flight for people. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. How has Corona affected your business? Have you seen uptick, downtick, steady? It's certain, certainly hasn't been steady. Yeah. But, um, I mean, obviously, when everything happened last year, you know, um, back in March and April of last year, it was all unknown for us. You know, we, we did choose to shut down for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, since then, our employees have been – Wonderful. I mean, Maine, Maine is a very, you know, tough group of people. We're, you know, we, we know how to deal with things and, and figure things out. Stubborn. And our employees have been wonderful <laughs> as far as, you know, 
masking up, working with us is how we can make the break room safe, how we can, you know, keep all of our workstations throughout the, the company safe. Um, but yeah, you know, as far as retail reactions, you know, to us, it's, yeah, you know, it's, we've got four stores on the Canadian border um, and we sure do miss our Canadian shoppers. Yeah. Uh, we would, we, it's, it, it's, we, we, we miss them and, and we've heard many comments from them that they miss coming to see us as well. So it's, you know, yeah, but there, there again, you know, a few weeks ago when the stimulus payments hit, you know, we see people coming in excited to shop us and look for flooring, flooring and furniture and some of the larger ticket items too. So it's, sure. it's had its ups and downs and nothing's predictable and no one has a crystal ball for what's no. happening going forward. No. Yeah. And, 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 and after you. Oh, well, I was going to say, and the other way it's changed probably is, and some of the furniture of the people, customers have come in going, do I have to wait for two or three months for this? And then it's like, no, you can buy it, take it home today. <laughs> or, or call your brother to get the pickup, you know? Because, you know, yeah, that's a good we, point sell too. It, we, sell it, we sell it off the sales floor. Yeah, when you go to see that other guy that's all has all the TV commercials, that nothing made me more mad than one time I bought something off him. Like, oh, yeah, you can't bring it home with you now. It's like, <laughs> I want instant satisfaction. I want to bring that sucker home and, you know, use it. Absolutely. I never understood that concept. Yeah. Now, how many employees does Martin, how many people does Martin's employ? Currently, it, the numbers hovers around 750. Wow. Wow. That's one of the lot b bigger ones in the state. Now, are there any other family members involved with the business? Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. How much, how much time have you got? How, much, how long do you want this to go? Let's commiserate yeah, I mean, together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the family, the family owned, yes, owns the business, you know, my, my father, his brother, but I've got, you know, my brother-in-law is our facilities manager. I've got three, four, five cousins. Within the business. Uh, one cousin does the footwear. Another cousin does the clothing. So yeah, it's, it is absolutely a family business. And I love that aspect of it. I mean, you know, back pre COVID, we used to have twice a year meetings that us family members would travel around and visit and meet with all the employees and shake hands and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a lot of employees that, and I'm 40 years old that remember when I was born. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, 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 work, that's a big statement. So it's, yeah. it's, it, it's really, really neat. You know, we, we pride ourselves on the loyalty of our, of our employees. And we, we like to think of ourselves as not only a family business, but <laughs> that family extends to those 750, 800 employees as well. Did you go right into the Martins um, sales floor or workforce, or did you go out and do some something else before? I I didn't dive right into it. Um, I, I mean, through college, I did uh, landscaping the summers, and we, we were both actually whitewater rafting guides for I a few summers up in the forks. I underlined that. We want to talk about that. <laughs> so we, we love our whitewater <laughs> rafting. Yeah, no, and, and and again, that's we talked about it earlier. You know, Maine is such a just a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, you know, fun things to do outside. Four seasons every year, um, but yeah, but I, I did that for a little while. Um, after a year or two after college, uh, my father started sending me the Cobra insurance bills. So then I just <laughs> <laughs> no, and so then I, did, I I decided maybe I should find something that's got benefits that that, that I can pay for that on my own. So. Eventually, yeah, this was back geez, 18, 17, 18 years ago now yep. that I came on with the company and kind of stepped into a little bit of marketing, which I still help with our marketing. Um, I also do handle all of our consumables category, food, snacks, paper towels, uh, toilet tissue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but and it, how did I get started in business? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had two brothers, one older, one younger, and all three of us. When we were growing up, we'd start working for dad at, and we all, all we ever called it was the store. So I'm going to work at the store. Um, and we would either be, you know, I'm talking when we were 14, 15, 16 and on, um, summers, you know, in school, um, and he felt we got much more valuable as an employee when we got our driver's license. Yeah, that's true. And, and I know my older brother, David and myself, we're both driving tractor trailers out of state into Boston when we were 16. Holy moly. <laughs> and, I, and when my son turned 16, I said, what in the world was he thinking? Oh, yeah. Of putting we got, we got all excited. So, you know, I've been in the business forever. We were all excited because of the 16, you know, licensing. But now you got to wait another nine months till they can ride with someone. That just throws a whole curveball in it. I know. Yeah, imagine sending Maggie out in a tractor trailer truck. That... 
Yeah. Different yeah. times, different times. No thanks. <laughs> well, it, it, I wanted to get a motorcycle. I think I was 17. And my dad says, no, no, you're only 17. You're not responsible enough. <laughs> I'm like, okay, here, let me give you the keys to the truck. The 18 wheeler. Go to Boston tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That, yeah, yeah, that's pretty amazing. But oh, I mean, no. we all wear multiple hats for the company. I mean, we, we've all had, you know, the phone call at, you know, five o'clock on a Friday, you know, geez, you got to be in St. Louis tomorrow morning, you know, catch the first flight you can out of Portland. And, you know, there's an insurance loss you get to go either go look at or, you know, help supervise, pack up. Yeah. Uh, but no, there's no real owner's manual for this the, this discount sure. industry that, that we're in i mean i know my, my father he actually studied civil engineering at umo yeah so i mean i i did study business administration but for the most part um not much of that true four-year degree translates to what we do, <laughs> do here i got a couple i got a couple questions that brought up uh so do you buy anything sight unseen um, a lot of stuff well sometimes we've got the relationships we've built with some of these salvors they might call us up and say, John, or my brother's name, his nickname is Ham. Everybody calls him Ham. They might call up and say, Ham, I've got this stock of pick something, you know, rigid tools that have been subject to some, you know, smoke. Can I just ship them to you and you tell me what you want to pay for them? Gotcha. Yeah. And, you know, they, you know, you can't, you have to be upfront and honest and tell them the way it is. If it's, you know, worth more than they think, we'll tell them that. Um, and you know, we've got that type of relationship with these people. So technically, yes, yeah. but we haven't really bought it. And it's really, it's just, Tell you let me ship you these things. When you get them, look at them, figure it out, do the inventory, and then we'll negotiate over the phone. Now, do you have to move? Is it a pretty quick paced, you know, I mean, because you know, natural disasters, you can't really predict anything. I mean, do you have to be ready to say, yep, grab it. You know what I mean? Or is there a time to. It's, um, if, for instance, I flew to St. Louis one time to look at a a big box retailer yep. Yep. that was going to be an insurance, it was a sealed bid by one of the salvos, there's going to be four or five people bidding on it. I walked in, and they're, they've already got temporary labor loading boxes and loading trailers. And we ultimately did buy it. So, you know, it, it, and it what happens, it was like they called on a, you know, pick a day, a day of the week. Can you be in St. Louis tomorrow? And then they want you to move it. And some of these big box retailers, they want the store empty of all the product. They hire people to clean it uh, and reshelve it. And that was going to happen in like four days. Holy yeah, cow. Do you, do you guys send trailer trucks? You have to hire trucks right there, like different – Fleet services. Some of, some of both. So, I mean, yeah. I mean you know, a big box retailer, you, 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 maybe 25 to 30 trailers, if not more, to empty that that entire location plus their back rooms. So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll have four or five people on site. We'll hire local local labor. I mean, it's part of the recovery process, especially during these disasters. Yeah. If there's a big box retailer that needs to clear out and reopen, you know, we need to get in there and work with their insurance company to make sure that that happens quickly, safely, and efficiently. And, yeah, then, then it's all those trailers – Head, head north to our warehouse, and we basically we, we figure it out once we get the product here. Wow. What's the weirdest thing you guys have bought? You're stealing I, all. You're you've stolen all three of them. Oh. Which, we've, three got, now. we've got more questions. This is just so fascinating to us. We don't even need any <laughs> other questions. Um, one of the – there's you know, it's like I watched one of your podcasts where somebody asked whoever, what was your favorite cabin you built? Yeah. Or redid. Yeah. Nobody can come up with the same answer, no. right? Yeah, yeah. So one of the de- one of the deals was Dad bought a lumberyard. I said Albany, New York. It's really the port of Rensselaer. Um, they had a fire there, and during the fire they couldn't. There was stacks of plywood, so they couldn't put the fire out. So they hired somebody to come in and push the stacks over with a bulldozer while they were squirting him with water. <laughs> Holy cow. They could put the fire out. Um, that, that This was back in the 70s. Uh, I was driving truck, and there was another fellow working for us driving truck. Dad said, go to Albany. Here's the address. Take a forklift. Take a banding machine and, and start stacking plywood. And when you've got enough to load a truck, call and start shipping it back. And we got there, and we ended up loading 
We worked all that week and four days the next week. And we've loaded like 11 or 12 tractor trailers of plywood. All four edges are burned on the edges. Yep. Now you guys build stuff. You might be going. Yeah, four burned edge four. <laughs> people, people, some people would go, who in their right mind would buy plywood that's burned around the edges? <laughs> okay, dad, dad sold it for a buck a sheet. One dollar per sheet. And all the local builders in the Waterville area bought it cut off whatever it took, right. squared, squared it up. And I couldn't do the math, but they figured out how to frame it and change the dimension and change the framing and, and you know, framed it for a buck a sheet plus some of their own labor. Right, absolutely. I'd be gold right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Bruce, what is it now, 30, 35? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to think of all the building materials that must be across the state that's gone through Martins because I know I've – I mean, back when I had a place in Auburn – buying flooring for that place. I mean, yep. all the places I've used building materials from you guys is pretty, pretty impressive. Okay. You get some good deals. Yeah. Okay. Now here's another unique one. This was also back in the seventies. Dad went to somewhere in Texas about probably June, July and bought two trailer loads of braided rugs that had been underwater. How that? Happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he contracts with the railroad to get refrigerated trailers that could freeze if they'd run long enough. Loaded them with the air conditioning running, shipped them to Maine, and he ended up working some deal with the Norwich Walk Airport, and we went up and laid <laughs> braided rugs out on the airport, the taxiway, That's out awesome. of the tie-down area to dry rugs. Now, <laughs> right. my brother, my brother, myself, and there was a couple of guys that were in high school and played football with my older brother. Yeah. And we were, That's we why Winslow's so good. Flipping braided rugs all Bunch day. Bunch of rug carriers. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if that if that started to dry out and get any mold, it was all ruined. So that's brilliant. Yeah. Well, but the, but the braided pot was made out of nylon, so it wouldn't rot. Yeah. But the threads that stitched the braid together were cotton. So you couldn't let it mildew. And you're right. It would mildew and rot. Interesting. We, we we want to hear about one more story, then we should probably go to the other question. No, I've got, I've got more questions. Oh, okay. What about, the, what about the glass windows in Boston? We heard something about that. Um, yeah. Mid, mid-70s, mid John Hancock building. Yeah. They had a problem with the glass breaking and falling out. It's a big problem. And, it, and if you Google it, you'll see some of the history. They For a while, the people in Boston would call it the, they called it the Plywood Palace. <laughs> Nice. So they ended up removing, I don't know if it was all of the windows or most of. And my dad and another company, this building 19 in Boston, bought, I think, most of the windows. We brought them to Maine. Um, and these were thermal pane, quarter-inch glass, quarter-inch airspace, quarter-inch glass. Most of them were about four and a half feet by 11. Wow. So if you come across camps that have those in the front, Say, got any left over? <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> four and, and wow, yeah, a, and they weighed a, a bloody ton. I bet. Man. And you know, it, we had some incidences where some got broken. <laughs> oh sure, cost of doing business. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there anything that you guys get really excited, still get excited about when you get the call, say, "Hey, we've got a load of this," where you guys are like? eager to get right call, in there. Call the family. You're right, right, right. The, yeah. The inside. I, mean, it's, it's, I think it's any of your, you know, your nationally known big box retailers that you can look at an entire big box retailer and say, okay, you could take that entire store and sell it at, you know, at least 35, 40% off. Yep. That, that's the exciting stuff to us. It's the stuff that doesn't normally get discounted or, you know, or be it a, you know, a golf pro shop that's, you know, all this year's current golf clubs or, or a mountain bike shop. That's all this year's current mountain bikes. Yeah. But they had an insurance loss, we can buy the whole thing and sell this year's brand new mountain bikes at a discount. Yeah. You know, that's the stuff that we can do that other, you know, off-price retailers can do. There's a lot of nice Under Armour ski bibs going around that I've got word that <laughs> I've seen that were from Martins the last year or so. Yeah, like, where'd you get those? Oh, Under Martins. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And is there anything you guys won't buy? That, that, that doesn't eat, besides things that eat. Right, 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 right. Besides well, it. sometimes we don't sell it, but we've bought it. But certain items 
off color stuff if it's really uh, <laughs> too much off color. We don't want it in the stores. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we've bought some insurance losses from very large internet big box retailers. If oh you will. yeah, yeah. And those internet big box retailers, obviously, they sell a little bit of everything. <laughs> gotcha. So there's some stuff that comes in that would make most people blush when you open. Do you guys the box. have an internet department for like stuff like that? No, I mean, we've got an account that we've done some internet selling, um, but we really try not to do that. Our philosophy is, yes, even if it's something that we could sell this XYZ widget online, I mean, maybe sell it for a little more than we could in our stores. It's not it's, your brand. I think that if you're taking that, pulling the cream off the top to sell it for a little more online, all you're doing is shooting yourself in the foot for how our sure, stores look. Sure, so. so you kind of have, you know, take the good with the bad and then fil yeah. filter through yeah. it and set aside what? You know you don't want to sell. Now, my my last question, <laughs> the slogan. Everybody knows your slogan. Yes. I should have bought it when I saw it. How long has that been around? And Oh, wow. I believe, why, that's, I believe that's older than I, I think. It was I think set, it's either 79 or 80. Is it really that old? Right, it was E.A.B. Edward Bushy out of Lewis and Auburn area. Yep. And he wrote the jingle and the whole song. And actually, the... The jingle itself has several verses to it. It's not just I should have bought it when I saw it for us. Maybe we'll have we'll have to email it to you guys. Yeah, yeah for them. sure. We'll put it on our website. Um, um, the, 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 unique, the unique story side of that is we had some electronics at the Lewiston store, and this guy wanted the, I think it was a mixing board. Yep. <laughs> and he dealt with my brother Ham. He's like, look, let me, I'm pretty good at jingles. Let me write something for you. All I want is that mixing board. <laughs> Main barter. That's a good barter right there. So, so yeah. we, my brother, you know, he, I think he just figured we'd get rid of a piece of electronics that we couldn't sell, but it's been the best, it's been the best buy we've ever made, I think. I, I, I would agree with you on that one. I got a question for Chase. When I'll tell you, my, what is your biggest, I should have bought it when I saw it at Martin's Mo Because it, it's stuff you still oh, think of. Oh, gosh. I know mine right off the top of my head. What is it? Boxes of GRK screws. When they, I, I, it was like, I was like, oh, it's, you know, this is before we started like going through, cause we go through so much GRK stuff, right? When we first yeah, started, I was yeah. like, I don't know if Chase would like if I bought this, but it was like, <laughs> you know, a hundred pounds off them for like pennies on the dollar. And I, I still kick myself in the butt for not buying them. Well, they don't, unless you get them wet, they don't go bad. Nope. No, they don't. Yeah. I can't think of what I've missed. I, I buy it. Cause he buys everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest. Yeah. I like, but I like the really the unique stuff. Some of the employees really like it because, like, if I hear we've had something that I needed or wanted, and I'll go to one of the stores and I'm, I'm asking someone to help, hey, where's XYZ that we had a bunch of? And they just chuckle because they look at me and they just start singing the jingle at me because I'm too late. Because <laughs> if anyone should know. That's <laughs> oh, awesome. That is awesome. Um, have we used up? So typically we have fan questions. But I think we might have asked them all. Yeah, I had three, and they asked all three of them. <laughs> That's good. Well, good. I you just want to say that Ma Martin's is, when I think of Maine, Martin's is right up there. We're like Maine. Oh, yes. Maine company. Completely. You know, you know Martin's, Rennie, this, all just good family owned, great com companies. And we couldn't do what we do. Like, you guys really are a big help to that. Yeah. You know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we almost, you know, got our inspiration from you guys saying, hey, you know, how can, you know, how can we keep save costs down and pass savings on to people, the main people? I mean, we hear people, tourists coming up all the time saying, oh, you know, one of our main, our half two stops is Martin's. Yeah. You know, it's not the uh, big outdoor real t re retailer. It's the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but <laughs> hitting I, the Martin's. I was just saying how fascinating. I mean, there's so many people made that only shop at Rennie's and Martin's, you know, maybe go to El Amin for something right, not, right, like right. high end. But something, I mean, yeah, something tough, special. Yes. Something special. Yeah. It's a good life. Well, I, 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 want, I also want to compliment you guys. Uh, I know you're down to earth Maine people, and a couple of years ago, you could tell a story. Yeah, I was I was up north with my family at Tufulios. Oh yes, <laughs> and walked and walked through. And actually, my, my son loves it. My son loves the show. He was only eight or nine at the time, and said hi. And you guys were kind enough to stop your socializing to let me snap a picture with him, and that. He still talks about it, and that, that means the world. Oh, that's awesome. It's just that, that down to earth. It's just like, like that my father was saying. It's just 
other Maine people. I mean, I, 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 I love living in Maine. I love being a Mainer and working and playing and socializing with Mainers. I, yeah. I love yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, we, we built too. ourselves our own bar right down back. So you guys should come down this summer and have some beers with us. Yeah, for sure. Well, that, we could take you up on that, but you better ask Jen. I was told bring the bags down and get them to Jen, oh. and <laughs> she'd be there all day. She wasn't there. She she's was downstairs. She's, she's over there in the corner the smiling. <laughs> yeah, come so, on. You know, come I got for a beer. You guys didn't have that, but I got to ask, is Jen hoarding these shopping bags that just happened to say what it, see what it says, bought it? And bought uh, hold on. We, we got some. You got some? Well, I was afraid she was, I thought she was hoarding them all Will for herself. Will you pick herself. the computer up real quick? She'll dole, she'll dole them out she, to us wait, slowly. She, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't do this. We might get in trouble. She's going to pick the computer up. Oh. Oh. I use them to decorate. There oh, okay. it is. All right. <laughs> and show them your pretty self. And Maybe Maggie. Maggie's seen me. Maybe okay. Maggie's this is Maggie. This She's... Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hi. <laughs> well, thank Where's you stuff? guys. Yeah, thank you very much. I yeah, we definitely enjoyed talking to you, lear learning a little bit more about the behind the scenes workings at Martin's. And if you see us lurking around Hudamaki, don't shoot. Just let us come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right, thanks, we'll guys. Try, we'll try to remember if we get building supplies or GK screws, we'll call oh, you guys. Oh, please do. We'll come by a bunch. Yeah. Awesome. Put our number on speed dial. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful day, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, you too. All right, we'll see you guys. Enjoy. Ashley's going to be so jealous. All right. And now we've got Project Pointers brought to us by Dervent. Submit a short video or question about your project to podcast at maincatmasters.com. Include your name, location, show us your project, give us as much detail as possible, and we will try to answer your question as best we can. Yeah, keep them coming. This is pretty fun. We try to... Yeah. Like, I think we do pretty good. Like Ryan said, this is free advice, so... Yeah, free advice. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. All right. Are you ready? Yes. This one... This one is from Sandy Rodriguez in Miami, Florida. Oh, oh, sunny Miami. My house was built in 1945. My question is, how difficult it is it to repair or replace the saw fit, the saw fit and fascia board? Yep, fascia board. Around the house. Does it all need to be replaced or can I replace some of it? How do I tell? Good question. So if people are asking, the saw fit is... It's pretty much a piece of lumber or vinyl siding that is parallel to the ground that returns your roof, the end of your roof back, right? Okay. And the fascia is the board on the outside of that, which runs perpendicular to the ground. So it's usually like a one by four. And then your rake. And then your rake runs up. up the side of along the with the roof pitch. It's pretty much the fascia that... Yeah, it's like the va it, it's fascia, but it goes up. Yeah, it's called the rake. Side fascia. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> side of your fascia. Let's check this out. Well, this side of the house doesn't seem so bad. My brother and I were able to put in the metallic breather, whatever you want to call that, oh, underneath yeah. the roof there, because that part was really bad. As you can see, some of it, it looks like it's just the wood, uh, paint peeling off of the wood. Some of there does have holes in it like in that corner as well. My other bad corner is on this one over here. I have had to put tape because oh, the birds Woo. and squirrels were trying to get in it. That's a good tape job and though. here it is. This corner is pretty uh, banged up. And as you move down further, yeah. it starts to- It's a pretty good video. Also get really bad. It's There's parts house. that I can tell that does need replacing. Like right here, I don't yeah. know if maybe that's just the wood, and especially the corners over here. This one's really bad, and then for some reason they made a box at the end over here, which I have no idea what's that <laughs> for, and if that can be removed. And what is that box. box? There's a box right on the end of it. They're covering up something. Yeah. Can't wait to hear from you guys. <laughs> Many blessings. Thank you. That's a good video. It's sunny and stucco and Miami. And <laughs> I'd be jealous if it wasn't so nice out right now. It's true. It's probably a trans that last piece is probably a transition that they had to, you know, because that's always a challenge 
is making different roof pitches meet up and how to box them in. So replacing fascia and soffits. It so hers the, she has the metal strip air vent right in there, right? So a roof can get vented. Yep. I would take a wire brush to it first and see how bad it is. Or even a screwdriver and poke along it. Yeah. I would I would start with a fascia. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can peel that back off easily, you're going to know a lot. You can look in there and see how your rafter tail ends. You know, if those aren't rotted, if they're solid enough to, you know, t- hold fasteners right. again, then it's just a matter of, you know, priming, painting, and you can do a section at a time. You definitely can do a section at a time. Take you, your gutters off first. Yep. You just want to make sure you split your fa- your fascia on a rafter tail. Um, and even when you pull off that fascia, you're going to be able to see what shape the soffit it is, is in, too. And save those for your patterns. Try to take them off as best you can so you can get some measurements off them. You don't have to save everyone, but if you get a couple common measurements, it's going to make it easy. Yeah. What do you think? Work in, like, 10 to 12-foot increments? Yeah. And obviously with that box as we're looking at, you want to work from the left of that over into the box and then over to the right. Right. Because, yeah, I think you're just going to have to peel that back and see what's going on there and find a way. Um, Coil stock. um, Coil stock. White rolled aluminum. You know, you can get different widths of it. 12, 8, 10, 24 inch is good to, you know, for situations like that, if you need to bend it and form something to cover it. You know, if you can't do it with pine boards or boards in general, you could fold up something to f- put over it. It's white. It will last, and animals and birds can't chew through it. They'll try. They will try. There's a couple sections where it looked like maybe just a paint's peeling. She's in Miami. There's probably salt there around there. Yep. So you, she might find that there's some sections you could get some wood filler, or wood putty, you know, if if it's not rotted through. Oh, absolutely. You know, and just only, and only fix what's bad. Yeah, and take you know take a get a multi tool or sawzall or something. Find out where your rafter tail is. You, you know, find your nail holes. Split it in the middle of the rafter tail and cut out however bad of a section. You know, again, take that section, measure the width, put a new one in. And I saw um, this little section of a roof. She had like nice new roof roof and that stucco. I mean, just even paint. It's gonna look really nice if she fixes that up. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, it's a lot of work though. But yeah, take don't. Don't try and tackle it all at once, yeah. section by section, and just carefully peel it back and see how deep it goes. And if you can, take the time and st- stage it right, whether you get borrow some staging or a couple little giants. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Take the, a, lot, a lot of people want to just start, like I used to be like that, just starting with one ladder and get up there. But it takes 10 times. You're getting down, moving your ladder. You're almost better if you have time and the resources to set up some nice staging. Yeah, and a lot of times you, you do. You want to just... You know, start by ripping the whole thing down and starting fresh. But if, you know, if you're taking it on yourself and it's, you know, an evening or weekend type of work, just kind of work your way around. It's going to, by the time you get to the end, start, start on a backside too. <laughs> yeah. Just ask Plumber Doug. He does that. He's been painting his trim. He takes one section, working his way around his house. So every four years, he's got new paint. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good luck, Sandy. Another good video. Yes, thank you, Sandy, for sending that in, and keep sending your submissions, and we'll keep we'll keep answering. Podcast at maincabmasters.com. And now we've got one question for Chase and Ryan. Right. <laughs> okay, this question is from Ellen Davila. How do you jack and level cabins without doing structural damage or breaking windows? Have you ever had any real significant problems doing it and how did you resolve it that's a good question that is you know like when we first when we did the first camp the diet camp that was one of the worst i mean was it six to seven inches out front yes and what's the answer to that nice and slow nice and slow you don't you don't do yeah and i think that's probably one thing that doesn't come across on the actual TV looks like we show. do it all at once you know they do the time lapse and they catch as much as they can, but you want to kind of work your way around the camp. If you lifted it all up at one side, you'd put pressure, you'd have pressure points, and you would definitely break windows. You would definitely snap some floor joists, rafters. The way we do it with our hand jacks is like we work our way around so it's settled a lot. But some of these guys use 
right. more better air hydraulics or oh, absolutely. Uh, hydraulics or air bags, they actually have to stop and let the house sit for a while. And if we get a good point where we've, we're making good progress, we'll actually stop, right? And, yep. You know, let's, get, let's call it a day or let's go do something else. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, this camp over the years has settled into place, so you don't want to spring it back too quickly. But it's amazing how much camps can settle. And, like, you know if the camp was built right, if it goes back together. Because even the Daggett camp, I mean, there was six or seven inches. That camp went back, and windows that didn't open for years open up. Yep. But, the you know, when we did last – two winters ago, the white camp, or last season, you know, that whole camp was lifted up, you know, on cribbing, on mm-hmm. I-beams in order to put a foundation under it. That's one of the situations where you lift it up all at once. But if we're going around and re-leveling, like the one we're starting – Next week, we'll go in and we'll kind of pick a high spot, which happens to be the fireplace, yeah. and work from there. You know, again, try and get it as close as we can without doing too much. We've broken a couple windows, but normally we don't. Normally you're going slow enough. Yeah, and, you know, you hear beams cracking and stuff when you're jacking, and you can kind of tell when when you've gone as far as you can. You know, there's more pressure pressure on the jack, and you start hearing those cracks and creaks and everything you say no, okay no different than waking up cracking the back as you get all... <laughs> i mean i know there's sometimes you like you just want to keep going like yep take a break and safety is you know key component of that is and slow yep always have a backup blocking in place you know so again if it does if your jack kicks out or it does drop you have something there to catch it so it doesn't just but if it was built right it really will go back together like just yeah. like that I always go back to the story of my grandfather when he was jacking our family camp, and he had that thing so high in the air, one good windstorm, and whoosh, the whole thing just slid. For, he came, went running out, and the whole thing slid. Clear water? Yep, the, the front camp. Wow. And that's how they ended up with a new camp down front. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Was it really one question? Um, I can, okay, I have a, if you answer this one quick, we can do it. Okay. Oh, one more. Well, they're kind of already been asked, but um, favorite dead album and favorite non-dead album from Jesse Slot. I'll let Chase go first. (laughs) That's a good question. He's probably not saying a live one. What is my favorite one? Why are you looking at me like that? What's a favorite non-dead album? Like something like any band. Like I. Oh, jeez. What's your favorite album? I really we were listening to Talking Heads on the way in. I really like oh, Talking that's Heads. A good one. Stop making sense. That is that Stop Making Sense movie is unbelievable. Yes. Like, those guys are unbelievable. I one of my favorite albums is um Traffic, Welcome to the Cantina, Ginger Breaker, like seventies. There's just so many good yeah. songs on that. Yeah. There's so much good music. There is. I can't pick a favorite dead album. Like I just like it like it all. And live. I'll start handing them down to you kids, and they can ask you. <laughs> Someday, one of you kids is going to like it, and I'm going to go. Someday. I'll be like it'll 80, be Nori. and I'll have to. It probably. It won't she's, be me. I'm going after, no, I'm going after Nori first. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> All right, so we have a few new products. in the. We actually have a lot of new products in the woodshed, but today we are going to show you a quick pick-me-up. It is Carabasset Coffee Company, the Woodshed Blend. It's a medium and dark roast blend of Africa and American beans. Oh, and I have the Kennebec Cabin Company blend, which is fresh roasting mountains of Maine. Uh, Kennebec coffee. Is that know. the same as this one? No. Oh, and we also have the Cabin Masters blend. What's my blend, though? It's all on your sheet. Oh, my sheet. So we've got the Kennebec Cabin Company blend, the Cabin Master blend, and the Woodshed blend. We've got three different blends of coffee. All for sale on our website or in the store. So check it out. Try it out. I mean, Carabasa Coffee is good it's Just stuff. moving those, those oh, boxes. It smells smell so it. good. Yeah, so come in and try it out. What's your favorite Carabasa Coffee? <laughs> I'm not a coffee drinker. Oh, so they have one called Backdraft. I've, and that is what Backdraft will get you moving. That is like high. That's similar to the Woodshed one. Similar to the Woodshed. So if you like a nice cup of coffee. So the darker it is, the more caffeine. No, it's opposite. So it's not like beer. It's no. the opposite of beer. Right? L- lighter roast. A dark roast has less caffeine. My favorite coffee is a coffee shake from Fielder's Choice. Oh, that's a good call, too. So, yeah, come on in. Try them out. I yeah. bet they go good with another main brand, Allen's. 
I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. So now last week's trivia question was? Um, what famous American composer was born at Rockland? I have no idea. I have no idea. The answer is Walter Piston. Why would you choose that question? Yeah. <laughs> She's just looking at her evil. What? Yeah. <laughs> gotta stump some gotta stump some people every now and then. Uh, so if anyone got that Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah, nice work. I'm impressed. We'll send a sticker too. Yeah, well, you'll get a sticker Someone too. Someone might know it. Walt what was his name? Walter Piston. Oh, it's Walter Payton. I might have gotten that. <laughs> All right. The next one is true or false. Lincoln County was named at, for Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. That's my type of question. 50% chance of getting right. <laughs> All right. I feel like this could be a trick question or it could not. A double trick question. If you know the answer. I don't trust her anymore. Yeah. First correct answer to our inbox at podcast at maincapmasters.com. Get some, a t-shirt. Yeah. That, yeah. True and false. No extra credit for that one. Nope. <laughs> nope. So thank you to John and Jake Martin for joining us today. Thank you to the Costins. we got to thank our sponsors as well. Nelma Hero Media Arts, Hammond Lumber Company. Thank you guys. Enjoy this beautiful weekend. And from the woodshed, we'll be talking to you. See ya. Peace.